soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I am going to show you five guitar phrasing exercises. When you're improvising or soloing on the guitar, phrasing is so important. This is what matters more than playing the right notes. This is what makes something sound like music. Phrasing can mean a few things, but in our case, we're just talking about the rhythmic composition of melodic lines. I think of it as just making sense musically by reacting to what we played before and specifically that we are finishing off complete ideas before switching things up. Not only does using phrasing and paying attention to this sound better as music, and really this is crucially what makes something sound like music, it's what brings anything to life, a scale, an arpeggio, any random notes, whatever, this is what is going to make it sound like a real idea. And working on phrasing has huge advantages for expanding our ideas and for being able to play for longer stretches of time without feeling like we ran out of things to say and helping us feel like we are truly improvising and not just playing things that we played before. Again, you will see what I mean. So there are four different phrasing exercises that we are going to do in this lesson. I call them phrasing blueprints because we're gonna give you a structure that you can practice uh, per working on your phrasing around. So we're gonna do those four specific phrasing blueprints for you to practice. And then I have a fifth exercise that is super fun, a little bonus tip at the end that I think you're really going to like to kind of tie it all together. That's what we're gonna cover. Let's jump right into the first exercise. Guitar phrasing exercise blueprint number one. We're going to use specific pitches with this phrasing exercise. Now, some of these we're, we're going to just use rhythms as our phrasing practice, and sometimes we are going to actually pay attention to the pitches more specifically with our phrasing practice. Anything and everything in between is fine, and there are so many variations on what we're gonna do that you can work on, you can make up your own or whatever you want. All we're doing is we're practicing our ability to pay attention to what we already played and react to what we already played and work off of or even mimic what we already played, and this is what expands ideas and makes musical sense and and you can play one idea over four bars eight bars 16 bars that kind of thing so this first phrasing exercise blueprint is a a a b we're going to use the a minor pentatonic scale you can use anything you want the little apostrophe is prime so really this is a a prime a b and what this means is that a is the first idea you play now you're improvising so whatever you play that's your idea. You don't have to plan it out. You don't have to know what's gonna be, but once you play it, you have to react to it. So what we're gonna do is whatever you play for your first idea, that's A. The second phrase has to be the same thing with only a different ending note. Now that can be more than one note at the end, but just if, to be strict at first, just change one note. That is the very final note. You can have eventually the prime mean a few different notes, you know, it ends differently in different ways. So you have A is your idea, then A prime, which means same idea, last note is different. A again, precisely what we played as the first A, and then B, totally different idea that wraps it up and we're done. So let's do a demonstration of this. So I'll count it off and then just play an idea and then follow the blueprint that we have. One, two, three, four. <laughs> feel how balanced it feels feels how I f feel how I followed the first thing I played all the way through and filled up eight measures with just that so like oh I said something I better repeat it I better build off of it I better finish that idea then you can start something totally new after that so that's nice and simple so one two three four dun, dun, three four two measures that one idea, da, da, boom, bum, dun, dun, dun. the prime is the ending note that's different. Da, da, boom, bum, dun, boom, da. Exactly the same uh, as the first A. And then, da, 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 da. now I did just improvise it, so I, I roughly, the rhythms are slightly, slightly different when I repeated it now just to go over it. Let's do one more other example of this. I'll stay in a minor pentatonic and you can practice it anywhere you want. Um, but just anything you play when you first start, it's such good practice because you have to remember it enough to repeat it. So, mm -hmm. 
So, again, same thing, filling up the idea. Let's move on to uh, guitar phrasing exercise blueprint number two. Okay, we're going to do A, 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 B, same thing without the prime, because this time we're going to just be paying attention to rhythms. So, this alone, and again, you could do so many different types of phrasing blueprint exercises, um, and a huge one is just being able to repeat whatever idea you had. So one thing I have people do sometimes is I'll have them just, whatever idea you play, you have to repeat that rhythm again and again and again. It just gets really uh, monotonous if you don't finish it off at some point. So this is really cool to do idea, same rhythm, same rhythm, and then something different at the end to uh, finish it off. So let's do it with the same scale, A minor pentatonic. That's A, here's A again. Same rhythm, different pitches. Two, three, four. Okay, so A, 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 B, simple enough, amazing stuff to practice. I think you get the idea, just the practice is the real thing to do and to, to uh, get yourself used to reacting to what you played. In reality, this is an important side note, in reality, in real music, we're not thinking of the phrase or even trying to mimic it exactly. We're, we're going off intuition, we're going off on the fly simply in general trying to react to what we played before and finish off an idea. These are just specific ways to get us used to that ability. And so following a really specific uh, parameter for practice is great. And then when you really play real music, just let go. Just try to let go of it and just and just react. That's A-A-A-B. Let's go on to guitar phrasing exercise blueprint number three. This is A-A-B-A. You've heard of this maybe in terms of song forms, like uh, a lot of jazz tunes are A section, A section, B section, A section, A, A, B, A. Well, we can do that with phrasing too. We can do it, do it with little tiny ideas, bigger ideas, whole sections, whole songs, whatever. So A, A, B, A. In this case, I'm going to give you a couple more details. I want every idea to be specifically two measures, and I want you to play for roughly a measure and rest or sustain for roughly a measure. So the A idea will be a measure of playing and a measure of either resting or sustaining, roughly. It's okay if it kind of overlaps a little bit. And then the B idea, the contrasting one, I want you to specifically play through that gap, through that measure that you were resting or sustaining, play through all the way and connect to, again, repeating that A idea at the end. This is one of my favorite uh, phrasing blueprint models to work around. Let's do an example of this. One, two, three, four. Rest. Rest. Play through. Two, three, four. So just simple major scale ideas just to make it really crystal clear for you. You can do it with whatever your favorite sounds are and do... Um, blue scale bending stuff, whatever, the, the structure of the phrasing blueprints remains the same and remains extremely powerful no matter what your taste or genre or sound is or anything. You can use this for songwriting too or anything you want. I think that was a good example of A, A, B, A, just with a simple major scale. Let's do the last one. One more exercise blueprint number four that I want to show you. You get the idea now. You can create your own structures, your own blueprints play around with any number of combinations of, of these, but this one I want to show you AABC. It's pretty straightforward given what we've done already. We're just having a third idea at the end that is totally contrasting. We have A, and then we're going to play A again. We're going to play B, and instead of going back to A, we're going to play just let ourselves go do something different. So this is kind of nice. You don't have to retain and remember exactly what you did with A. So the little playing demonstration at the beginning of this video actually happens to be, I didn't plan it this way, but that happens to be this uh, phrasing blueprint. That's A. Now that's like A prime, where the same pitch is exactly, but it counts as A A. So and then so that's b now that started off as a but then continued on so that counts as b i love playing the same beginning of an idea many many times and letting it evolve that's kind of what this does okay so that was 
that works as AABC. So that's a nice example of that. Let's jump to uh, our bonus tip here. This is really not a bonus tip. This is kind of the culmination of everything. Ideally, we want to just have this be an intuition that we're reacting to what we played before. So definitely work on a few. You can work on the ones that I'm recommending here or tweak them or make up your own and work on some kind of parameter where you're very strictly trying to stick to a blueprint phrasing model. And then just really practice your working on your phrasing and just letting go that you are not thinking of anything specific. You're just reacting and trying to make good music and finish ideas and expand ideas and truly improvise. So you're not playing just licks or things that you played before. And for me and for a lot of people singing along, as you hear me doing sometimes, and I'm not great at actually accurately singing it along, but singing along improves my phrasing immensely. Uh, so as soon as I start singing along, I tend to give it more space. I tend to remember when I played better. I tend to play simpler, react to it more, and all of that. Another thing is that if I play in octaves, and I haven't talked about that uh, before, I'm going to do a video on it in the future, I'm playing with octaves. It slows me down and makes me play even simpler and sing along and play even better phrasing. So, uh, But if you sing along and just try to react... Da -do -da 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 and so, you know, not even hitting some of the pitches sometimes when I'm singing, that's okay. I think I did A, A, B, C uh, that time. Not on purpose, I'm not thinking of it or anything. Again, if I do octaves. <laughs> I just kind of comes together as more musical for me if I'm singing and forcing myself to slow down a little bit by playing those octaves. So the main thing though is to play and try to just react and intuit it. If it's still challenging, choose a model again and a blueprint to work over, uh, to work on and do on purpose, and then go try to do it intuitively again and play around with singing along, humming along, even if you're just going da 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 whatever. Uh, it helps me, you know, take a little breath, have a little space, uh, play around with that. See how it works for you. Phrasing is everything, everything, everything. I do a lot of phrasing practice with random notes, atonal notes, try to make it sound musical because it truly does uh, make something, the structure makes something sound like music regardless of the pitch or the scale or the arpeggios, which are all stuff I love to teach. And I, I'm a big fan and I work through that stuff and I teach it on my channel, but the phrasing is what brings it all to life. Speaking of vocabulary stuff, if you want some structures to practice some of these phrasing exercises with, get my chord tone vocabulary arpeggio pack. It has 12 different chord types, the five different positions of all of those chord types and the exact arpeggio shapes and uh, chord tone shapes to improvise with over those specific chords. And you can start to map those out and play with phrasing stuff over it, which will help them sound musical and not just like uh, exercise arpeggio shapes. Download that for free with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. Let me know if there's a phrasing blueprint in this video that was your favorite one, or especially I would love to hear if you're coming up with your own structure uh, and you're playing around with your own phrasing blueprint model. Let me know what that is in the comments. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson is on playing an advanced chord melody solo guitar arrangement of the classic jazz standard Stella by Starlight. Looking forward to bringing you that lesson. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.